believe that the, um, the forecasted economic uh, growth rates uh, does not exactly uh, take into account uh, consideration of things uh, which are happening in Europe and also the debt crisis that we're having. So possibly the, if the, the, the situation in Europe touches Malaysia and uh, there will be a cascading effect, how do you think um, or what do you think Malaysia should do to um, insulate herself from the imminent crisis? Thank you. I do believe in the globalised uh, cycle we can actually uh, effectively insulate themselves, particularly Malaysia. Even Burma has chosen not to do so uh, because I think just, just to, to accept the stark uh, economic realities. And Malaysia is essentially a trading nation. It will have some bad impact. And a, a, a responsible economic projection will have to look at these figures. Uh, in the latest, uh, they say, you know, look at how the minister replied. Well, you know, the United States and affecting you, uh, we will depend on the investors and trade with our compatriots in the region, including China. Now, imports of uh, chemicals and some uh, of these sort of related products to China has, in some areas, more than halved, uh, reduced by half. I mean, it will have some repercussions. Okay. Um, that's why, for a country, the fundamentals have to be strong. Fundamentals mean the, the figures in terms of how we do we deal. At a time when we are able to deal with the issue of uh, deficit, we have to do it now. Because it's still uh, very much uncertain. Um, we not sound as an, as an economic report the Quran. Yusuf in the Quran, and Yusuf in the Quran, or Joseph in the Bible. But it makes a lot of uh, compelling case and uh, requirement of basic humility for us to acknowledge. The time of um, strength or economic vibrancy, you know, uh, we must uh, ensure that we control reduce waste, have enough savings, settle all debts, so that at a time of some difficulty in hardship, we're able to contain. There will be difficulty, but at least there is some buffer. People do give all sorts of prescriptions uh, and, and analysis on the crisis, 97-98. Since I was in jail, I was not, not in a position to uh, defend myself. Because they say, this is this Arnold's program, he just accepts, uh, accepts in total the IMF prescriptions, which is not true, you see. What we did was, at the time when we had a surplus, you know, I came in with a small deficit. In two years, I insisted that there should be a balanced budget in Malaysia. Then after the third year, there was a surplus. At the time of the surplus, I wrote to the World Bank, saying that we don't, thank you very much, we are not. The government will not borrow. We have enough funds. That was when? 93. Of course, I happened to chair the development committee of the World Bank and the IMF. For that, I was portrayed as the American agent or IMF, uh, whatever. But the fact remains, it was me in 1993 that wrote to the World Bank to say we will not require your funds, thank you very much, we'll coordinate, cooperate with you, work with you on some of the issues that will benefit the country. In 1999, when I was in jail, in prison, I only realized later when I was teaching at Georgetown University and I had a sort of staying as a consultant with the World Bank on the issue of governance and uh, accountability and some of anti corruption measures with the World Bank, then I look at the file, Malaysia file. In 1999, and I looked at it in 2008 2005, I realized that the then finance minister, Dr. Mahade, wrote to the President of the World Bank appealing for funds and to borrow from the World Bank. This is not a paradox. Anwar was accused to be a person dependent on the World Bank. He then decided to stop borrowing from the World Bank. And the guy was so much anti World Bank and IMF wrote quietly asking for funds from the World Bank. No. Now, my point here is whether we can uh, sustain the economy under this sort of difficulty. Let us be honest in acknowledging the fact that in the next few years it's not going to be easy for us. 
So the projections will be realistic. You don't manipulate with these figures. You can't say that, you know, uh, we will reduce deficit and we, we have failed to reduce in the last 13 years. Not once has the figure to be considered to be credible. We say we will achieve growth 6% and we have never in the last years achieved those figures. So I believe economics is not politics. We will have to at least present figures that can be credible. No. That is why if you, you accept the fact that there cannot be total dependence on petrol and expenditure, that uh, we are in for a more uh, difficult period, then our policies must reflect, must reflect that in terms of these gigantic, gigantic uh, mega projects. Um, and then no tender. You can have MRT, you can have a double tracking, it can be two billion, three billion, who knows what. Things that you can save by the billions you lose out because of the disbursement of contracts to trolleys. And what was shocking is that they are still being supported and endorsed even by the, you know, some of the Western countries because of their interest in procuring this. I don't believe that the you know, European governments or the Americans can safely say that they are consistent in their policies when it comes to governance or democracy. Because sometimes uh, it is the business and the procurement that dictate and can alter some of their position vis-à-vis -vis these problems. So I am uh, not very optimistic about what's happening in Europe because uh, the time and the time when they could have done more to ease a relatively small economy like Greece, nothing else always, I mean, um, they need to be persuaded and taking a, a longer time and a small amount and then of course it has spread at, as a contagion and now generally uh, most people don't seem to feel that it is um, that promising although I don't believe it's going to be catastrophic you're dealing with you know some strong economies Germany still is a major economy in Europe so I don't think that we can just be summarily uh, dismissed uh, the capacity of the Europeans to how to maneuver and uh, redeem itself. Uh, notwithstanding the fact that they will encounter some difficulties. Um, the Americans are still very divided in, in terms of their uh, economic prescriptions and policies. And now going to the presidential race, things are going to be more complex. But to, uh, for us in Malaysia, and listening to Minister's reply to the Parliament to suggest that, well, no, we can contain, this is well exaggerated, we don't have a problem, China is a booming economy, etc., etc. I think this is an understatement. I think realistically we should realize that we will have to in, in, encounter this. So, what do we do specifically uh, to this question? Do we have to go, to go through in the minutest detail in our economic prescriptions? But it starts from reducing waste. Now, the Auditor General's report, the Pramuda report, suggests that waste exceed 20 billion ringgit. Leak, leakages, wastage, corruption exceed 20 billion. These are government figures, not my figures. 28 billion. We say exceed 20 billion. Now, assuming a country that is um, clear in its uh, commitment to ensure that it's controlled, uh, controlling this excess of the corruption, leakages, wastage, and proper procurement policies and tender, I'm sure we can save billions. Look at uh, what's happening in terms of the monopoly, in terms of essential goods and items. Look at the IPPs. How much is deemed to be as incentive? People do criticize us. Say, I know, how is it you're questioning? policies uh, or agreements have been duly signed. But you know, incentive given to these companies, and now it's coming to be a major problem. But the billions, can't we just look at it and renegotiate some of the terms? Uh, let's say the government is not supposed to compare. Well, okay, renegotiate. If you don't do that, then the leakages 
you continue. So I, I think uh, again, uh, may I summarize by stating that what is deemed to be unrealistic in the part of this government has nothing changed. Is there any effect, uh, any meaningful change in terms of policies? Look at procurement. Look at these billions of dollars in terms of uh, uh, the Sulawesi land, the prime land in Kuala Lumpur. How do you hide uh, behind this need to uh, have proper tenders? You say it's one Malaysia, why MDB? Period. Government has an interest. Okay. Uh, then there will be more criticism. Okay, we give to the armed forces board. So you silence the opposition in that manner. Why can't we have a proper tender? What is a tender then there is a possibility that the Chinese will take everything? Why can't we impose some condition? For example, this area has been manned by the armed forces for generations. Give them some protection. When they happen to be majority of them, it's okay. Give them, ensure that the interests of the ex army force are protected. I mean, these are transparent policies that is not deemed to be racial. But to, to finally disperse and decide the, uh, the major economic uh, decision uh, costing 30 billion, 40 billion, 50 billion without tender and to friends in the name of economic transformation and we endorsed uh, this is uh, to my mind totally unacceptable and in the long term can be detrimental to the health of the economy.